All righty, folks, something I want to do here with the one and only Casey from Brick by Brick Wealth is actually get in the old time machine and rewind the clock to Casey, I don't know, I'll call it 1.0, pre, pre-owning rentals, if you don't mind. You ready to go on this journey with me, Casey? I'm so ready. All right. So again, you've made the move from Southern California uh, to Memphis. You uh, a stay-at-home mom. You have a couple of kids, as I believe in the story. Yep. And you decide you want to get a rental property. Yes. Unfortunately, you don't have the down payment money. So, so you take it upon yourself to create a side hustle that allowed you over time to produce a down payment that has become the seed to your growing portfolio. So, so bring people with you. People, a lot of people want to get started. A lot of people don't have the money. You took it, you know, the bull by the horns, if you will, and said, I'm going to fix that. And yeah. your answer was a side hustle. So walk us through that journey. So I'm a, I, I, I'm a, how can I say this? I don't take no for an answer. No is not an option to me. You can't tell me, no, I can't do something. No, I can't have something. No, no, no. That's why working for somebody else was really tough for me to do. And I only had a quote real job for three months because I can't have someone tell me, no, you can't go on vacation. No, you can't do this. So I'm always going to find a solution. I achieve success and everything that I've done, I feel like I've done it. You know, I can do it and I know I can't. And that's an internal belief that my dad kind of instilled in me and my sister is the same way. So backing up the boat, you know, um, in 2007, which I graduated college in 2005, I was on the five-year plan, you know, changed majors and all that five-year plan. Um, I graduated, I got my real job for three months, didn't work out. And I got my real estate license in 2007. Um, I understood then the power of investment, and I wanted that. Blake and I, um, I helped, I helped um, other, as an agent, I helped other people find flips in California. So people weren't looking to buy rentals. I didn't have rental knowledge at the time. People were looking to just buy flips. So I understood that, and I understood the rehab process, and I could understand ARVs and all those things. But I didn't know how people flipped million-dollar properties. I thought you needed a million dollars. You know, I didn't understand how that worked then. So that wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to buy rental properties, but, and I knew they were cheaper. You could get in with less. And I said, okay, let's do it. So Blake and I probably made, um, it was at least 40 offers on properties, never in California and in the Inland Empire um, on with a cash flow. And we talked about this in that earlier episode, not too long ago. Um, never quite worked out, never lit all the way, you know? So in 2013, Blake got offered a job in Memphis doing something that he didn't really have experience in. Someone took a chance on him and it was more like a dream job doing design and marketing when before he was doing like insurance and stuff like that was finance, kind of boring, but he was, he's good at everything he does too. So we got this opportunity and we came out here and we flew out to Memphis with my cat. Um, I'm a three week old son and a two year old. We knew nobody. And we bought where we're still at today, 10 years later, a fixer upper house, of course, right? And I'm like, okay, um, we live in freaking Memphis, right? And it's a gold mine because this is Memphis is one of the top cash flowing um, markets in the country. And it has been for a really long time. So I said, Blake, we are not going to chicken out this time like we did in California. We are going to buy rental properties this time. Look where we live. Like, come on. And he's like, okay, sounds good, Casey, but we just bought a rental. We just bought our primary residence, put a lot of money down. We're on a single income. We just moved across the country. That was a big expense. And we have to fix this house up. So where are we going to get this money for a down payment for a rental? And I was like, you know. <laughs> you know Stop it. Stop being you, logical, you Blake. That. So if you want to buy a rental, I'm all in. He goes, but you've got to figure out a way to make some money for it. And I'm like, but that's why I moved here. So that I didn't have to put my kids in daycare and I'm not going to get a job and blah, blah, blah. That was my promise, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, hmm, how can I have my cake and eat it too? I want to be a stay-at-home mom. I want to do all these things. I want time freedom. I don't want to work for somebody else, but I want income. I need income. And I knew then really that rental properties was it. I knew it. I could I could manage them myself. I could hardly spend any. I knew it would be work up front, right? Um, fixing them up, buying them, whatever. But once you have a tenant in place, pretty much on autopilot, hardly talk to your tenants all year and make income. And I did achieve that. But for the first one, how? How did I save up money? So I said, okay, well, what am I good at? I'm good at writing. My my you know degree was in public relations. I, I can do that. You know, I um, I did some freelance writing and stuff for 
But I'm like, that sounds really boring. Like, I don't want to do that. I'm all by myself. I'm alone, um, you know, all day long with no friends while Blake's at work. And what can I do that's also fun? And I was like, well, I love to do crafts, right? What girl doesn't like crafts? So, but I'm also not creative. I can't dream. I can't paint. I mean, my stick figure people, like you can't tell if it's a boy or a girl, they all look the same. So I'm not very creative in that aspect. So I found, I was looking on Etsy, looking online to see, okay, well, what are other people doing to make money? Maybe there is something I can do. And I found this thing called a Cricut machine or their silhouette is another brand. And it's a die cutting machine where you can, you know, you people have probably seen like the tumbler cups with the letters on them or, you know, bachelorette shirts, you know, Disney shirts. Everyone gets custom Disney shirts made when they all go to Disney World or Disneyland. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I can do that because I got to have the program design it for me. I don't have to be creative. I can personalize it with people's names and I can sell it on Etsy and I can sell it online. So I'm like, and I don't need to draw or paint or color, you know, can't do that. So I bought one of those machines. And I was so apprehensive. Michael, it was a $300 machine. I'm like, Blake, I can't spend $300 on this. Like, what if I don't make my money back? What if I'm a failure? What if it doesn't work out? He said, well, then at least you will have learned a skill that, you know, and you can do things for the family and for your friends. So it would have been for nothing. You would have learned a skill, how to, you know, make yep. all these things. So it wouldn't go to waste, even if you don't make money off it. Just buy the machine. And I'm like, oh, that's a lot of money at the time. I don't know if I can invest that in myself and risk it. So I did it, bought the machine and to my left, this used to be my crafting room. Uh, this used to be my Etsy workshop, but I started a business on Etsy. Um, and in a one and a half years, I saved up $20,000 um, personalizing items from bridesmaid hangers, shirts. I, then I built my own etching machine. Um, Blake put it uh, like a like a glass etching machine. So I would etch glass, uh, glassware and um copper Moscow meal mugs and sell things wow. at a little bit more $50, you know, a piece for those. And, you know, we built that from Harbor Freight part, you know, instead of buying the $800 etching machine. So I evolved and did some things, but my price thing was 50 bucks. That was it from $5, $5 bunny rabbits that I bought the Dollar Tree and I would get some glitter vinyl and I would put kids names on them in the year and sell them for $5 for people to stuff their Easter baskets all the way to little Moscow meal mugs and picture frames and stuff for weddings. I did all that with, you know, finally my mother-in-law did move out here um, and help a little bit with babysitting, but most all of that work was done at nights when Blake got home from work, during the kids' naps, or on the weekends when he was home to watch them. So for everyone that, you know, says, oh, I don't have time, no one's there to help me, you can find the time. I just elected to not watch Netflix. I elected to, during my kids' naps, instead of maybe taking a nap with them, like they say to do, I went upstairs and I made my orders. And I did that for a year and a half. And that's how I came up with the down payment for our first rental. Again, I've said it many times, folks, you've heard on this channel, all the millionaires have a different sacrifice and story to getting started. This is a unique one uh, where she created a side hustle from nothing and um, just so inspirational. Right. And uh, it's, it's always hard, right? It's always hard. You just got to choose your a lot heart. of tears. And blood, uh, cut myself a lot. A lot of tears, blood, sweat, tears, all the literal things. Oh, that is so, but it's worth so it. good. Yeah, it's, it's worth, worth it, it, right? Again, yep. it's it's always hard. Your heart is different than someone else's heart, uh, but the rewards are so worth it. Casey, where can people go find your inspirational story and see what you're putting out? Well, people can find me every day on Instagram at Brick by Brick Wealth. Um, you can check my website, brick by brick, brick, uh, brick by brick .com, And you can see all the podcasts that I've been on. You can see all the things that I'm up to, um, all the freebies I have, because I specialize in helping newbies get started, just like how I did. So there's a lot of free resources and stuff. Um, but anywhere you can, you know, social media, you can find me. Awesome. Thank you so much.